Hi, Matthias from 10 Minute Physics here. Welcome to tutorial number 15. Today I'm going to show you how to handle cloth self-collision, which is one of the toughest problems in animation, or you could say it's the holy grail of animation. So let's start. Let me make a few announcements first. I now created a Twitter account. I also have a Gmail address. Now if you have cool demos that run in a single HTML file and that use ideas from my tutorials, please send them to me and I will publish them. Now let's dive right into our subject, cloth self-collision handling. As usual for the slides and demos, have a look at my webpage at www.matthiasmuller.info slash 10 minute physics. Let me first explain to you why cloth self-collision is such a tricky problem. So let's assume we have a soft body. For a soft body, we know exactly what's inside and what's outside. So if we have a vertex inside the body, we know exactly how to resolve the collision and where this vertex has to go. Now for cloth, the situation is different. There is no inside and no outside. Resolving collisions is a global problem because there are multiple solutions. We can, for instance, move this piece of cloth completely down or completely up to resolve the collision. One solution is to start in a valid state and make sure that no entanglements ever happen. Sometimes, however, this is not avoidable. Even though I don't have the perfect solution for cloth self-collision handling, I will give you five tricks that make it work very well. The first is to use particles and the particle hash for collision detection. The second is to use the rest distance between the particles to avoid jittering. Use substepping instead of continuous collision detection. Enforce a maximal velocity. And use an unconditionally stable cloth-cloth friction method. The first trick is to use simple particles and the particle hash for collision detection. My general advice is to use as many simple primitives as possible instead of just a few complicated ones. This makes the simulation much simpler, you get more degrees of freedom in the simulation and higher fidelity. Since we use simple particles, we can use the simple hash for uniform particles for collision detection. I introduced it in tutorial number 11. Typically, we want the particles to be twice their radius apart from each other. However, sometimes their rest distance is smaller than 2r. In this case, the distance constraints and the collision constraints fight each other, which results in jittering. The solution to this problem is to set the collision distance to the minimum of 2r and the rest distance. It would require a lot of memory to store the rest distance from a particle to all its close neighbors. Instead, we compute the rest distance on the fly from the rest positions of the particles. My third trick is to use substepping instead of continuous collision detection. Let's assume we have two particles and they do not collide at the beginning of the time step. They do not collide at the end of the time step either, but they have collided during the time step. In order to detect that, one typically uses continuous collision detection or CCD. Here we test the overlap of the swept volumes of the two objects. A swept volume is the volume that is touched by an object that rotates and moves in a curved way, potentially. Of course, this is a complicated geometric object. Once we have detected the collision, we have to roll back the simulation somehow. If we use substepping instead, the chances that we miss the collision are much smaller. I explain in tutorial number 9 how substepping works. Basically, instead of performing n solver iterations per time step, we perform n substeps. What's important here is that we create the hash only once. Otherwise, the simulation would be much too slow. However, even with substepping, we might miss collisions. To avoid this problem, we enforce a maximal velocity. We want that the particles do not move further than r during a substep. The size of a substep is the size of a simulation step divided by the number of substeps. So what you can see is the maximal velocity is proportional to the number of substeps. This means the larger the number of substeps, the larger the limiting velocity. Let's do an example here. Let's say the radius of a particle is 1 cm. We have 20 substeps and the simulation time step is a 30th of a second. In this case, we get a maximal velocity of 20 km per hour or about 13 miles per hour. This is the speed of a fast running character, so it's not a severe restriction. The last trick is to use stable cloth cloth friction. Let's assume we have two particles with current position x1 and previous position p1. We can use the size of a substep and compute their current velocity as current position minus previous position divided by h. Next, we compute their average velocity. 
Then we push the current velocity towards the average velocity. As you can see, the time step size cancels and can be omitted. D is a damping coefficient between 0 and 1. As you can see, these two statements never overshoot, which means we have an unconditionally stable simulation. This is the final demo. As you can see, we have 12,000 triangles and the simulation runs at about 60 milliseconds per frame. I can pull the cloth and it never self-intersects. In this demo, I can also disable collision handling and as you can see, things look very bad in this case. The code is based on the code of the last tutorial about cloth simulation. Therefore, I will only show you what I added. This is the hash that I introduced in tutorial number 11. I added one new method. It's the method query all. This method computes the neighbor list of all the particles. In the simulation loop, I first compute the maximal velocity. Then I create the hash. Next, I create all the neighbor lists using a maximal travel distance. The maximal travel distance is the maximal velocity times the size of the time step of the simulation. Next, we integrate all the particles. In the solve part, we solve all the constraints. If we want to handle collisions, we also call the solve collision method. Then we update the velocities. In the solve collision method, we run through all the particles. For each particle, we retrieve the neighbor list from the hash. Next, we run through all the neighbors. Here we compute the distance between the two particles. Then we compute the rest distance. Then we check whether the current distance is smaller than the minimum of the rest distance and the cloth thickness. If this is the case, we push the particles apart. Here you can see the friction method. We first compute the velocities of the two particles. Then we compute the average velocity. Next we modify the velocities as I explained in the slides. This concludes the tutorial. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I see you in the next one.